Ocala, Florida, horse capital of the world, where the dawn of a new day brings a fresh opportunity to chase history. A bloodline destined for greatness, groomed from birth, trained to triumph over obstacles. Powerful, graceful, majestic. It's here strength is tested. It's here endurance pushed to the limits. It's here champions are made. Watching these gentle giants ride to victory is truly a thing of beauty. But as a human being, it made me reevaluate. Who am I? What is my purpose? How can I win in this race called life? The journey led me to Now Church. I'll never forget the first time. Hands lifted high. Voices raised, a real encounter with Jesus Christ, an expression of love, an atmosphere of faith, a passion for others, all ages, all colors together as one, for a cause greater than ourselves, serving our neighbors and reaching our world, to know God and make Him known. It didn't take long to realize, this is where I belong. generation with a now sound and a now word.
declaration God there's power in our praise there's power in the spoken word there's power in us declaring your promises and your goodness today and so this morning we are always grateful every single time we get a chance Lord we lift you up Jesus we exalt you Jesus we magnify you Jesus be present right here in this room don't let us walk out these doors the same way we walked in we are grateful for your presence grateful God could you lift your voices now and worship your name? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We love you today. And we worship you now and then. Oh. There is power in the name. There is power.
understand that this is a walk of faith. We know that sometimes there's bumps in the road. We know that sometimes we don't understand our circumstances. But God, you are faithful. If he's been faithful to anybody in this room, lift up your hands and begin to declare it. That's right. Come on, he's been faithful to the good and the bad, to the hard and the simple. Our God is faithful, yeah. yeah. So I'll live the rest of my life declaring your goodness, God. And I posture and I say, and I will not fear you are with me. Come on. And I'll see this fight from the victory, yeah. And no power of hell can stand against me. And this is why, because I've seen this fight from the victory. Sing it with me in one voice. Come on, say it. I will not fear when you are with me. church come on let's give God victory we win I said we win now church we win maybe you didn't hear me I said we win now church I don't know what you're going through this morning but we win bottom line period God says that we have the victory when Jesus Christ is with us and who can be against us amen that's his promise so maybe you're struggling this morning maybe you're coming in thinking God I need you he's right here He's right here, and he's saying, I've got you. We're moving forward. Don't you worry. Our God is good. Amen? Amen. During the holiday season, I was thinking about this. Sometimes it's so easy to get distracted on all the stuff we have to buy, all the decorations we have to put up. When so I have to remind myself to stop and say, this is not about me and my stuff, but this is about God and how good he is and what you've done for me. Sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins and all my things because he wants us to live in that freedom and that victory this morning. There's a great praise report uh, that we received, and that was uh, there, uh, someone that sowed in the Heart for the House offering early in this year. And when they sowed, they were believing for all these different things. And they said when they sowed, it was a stretch of faith. But just like we've been singing today, God's going to come through. And so we were reading this praise report, and it talked about all the things that they had uh, were believing God for. Everything and above was answered for them. Because our God doesn't just barely make it by, but he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. 
So let that be a faith extender, a faith stretch, and a faith boost for you this morning to know that God, if he cares about those people, he cares about you and your needs. In fact, so much so that he knows the number of hair on your head. That's how much he cares about you. I don't know the numbers of hair on my own kids' heads, but God does. So God cares about you this morning. Amen. And let's give God another shout of praise this morning. Amen. What a great day to be at church. Listen, if you came in this morning, this is your first time here, we want to say thank you for coming. We're so glad you're here. We welcome you uh, at Now Church, and we hope that you're having a great time. And listen, if you came, maybe this is your second time, but you skipped last week for some reason, we got something new for you. Just last week, we rolled out something called Welcome Cards. And right now, we want to give you something if it's your first or second time here and you haven't filled out one of these cards yet. Our ushers are going to be coming up and down the aisles right now. You're going to see them walking around. Look at Mike looking all beautiful right there with his cool hat on and everything. Just make eye contact with one of them. And, and they'll hand you a card, fill it out, and you can go out to our information center, and they're going to give you a free gift. So make sure you guys do that right after service to our information center. we got some amazing people out there that want to greet you. Now, also, there's something around here that we have as well called a three-week challenge. How many of you guys like a challenge? Just a few of you. Okay. For those of you that don't, we still have something called a three-week challenge. And that is to try our church out for three weeks because there's no possible way you can get to know us as a church. This might be your, our first date. So give us a try. Come back again next week in the week after and just see what God will do in your life. Because maybe you've been praying, God, I need answers. God, I need you. And you're here this morning and you already feel God working in your heart. So don't stop here. Keep coming. Keep, keep committed. Keep coming and see what God's going to do in your life. Amen? And then last but not least... If you've been coming for a few weeks, and listen, this isn't just for those that maybe have been coming for three weeks. This is for three weeks all the way up to almost 30 years we've been to church. So maybe you've been coming for 30 years, and you hear us talk about next steps. Every single week we talk about next steps. And you might think, oh, that's for those who are newer here. No, that's for everybody because we want everyone to get involved. And maybe you've been coming for, for years, and, and you, you maybe moved away and came back, and you thought, well, I'm still a member. Well, there's something that we've introduced earlier this year called Next Steps, and it's been amazing, the fruit that we've seen. Because the thing is, it draws us closer, takes you higher in God. Mike's shaking his head. He knows what this is about. Because it takes you higher in your relationship with God, number one. It also helps you discover the gifts and talents inside you that you had no idea. There's been people that we've been talking to over the last several weeks that have been going through Next Steps that had no idea the certain giftings and callings that they've had until they went through Next Steps. So maybe you've been coming here for years and you've been hearing about Next Steps. Today's your day. Today actually is a great day to go because my beautiful wife, Pastor Kristen, is teaching it. Come on now. Come on. I know it's probably weird giving up for, you know, my wife, but I think it's, she's awesome. She's beautiful. She's amazing. She's anointed. She's gifted. And, uh, I, you know, she's just awesome at what she does. So make sure you stick around for second service, 11 o'clock. Go through praise and worship and then hang around for uh, Next Steps coming right up. All right, now, right now, I want you to turn around, get out of your comfort zone right now, and go maybe across the room and introduce yourself to someone that you didn't come to church with. Good morning, church. How are y'all? It's the voice from the back. It's God speaking to you. Uh, we've got some. Uh, we got a cool special this morning. Could you guys give it up for Sid and Kirsten? <laughs> we love Christmas time, and we love the opportunity to do what we do. Y'all ready? Here we go. One.
When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? I try to take life back right out of the hands of the king of the world. How could I make you so small when you're the one who holds it all? When did I forget that you've always been the king of the world? You will always be the king of the world. Yeah, this Wednesday night's going to be a great night for us here. Why don't you give it up for the ladies again? They just uh, sang their hearts out. It's always weird for me at Christmas time. We have different people, different people singing and different things going on because a lot of them have grown up in this church, including those two young ladies right there. And Kirsten used to come give me a hug when she was about two years old coming in here, and now she's in college. So anyway, it, uh, it's good. it just kind of reminds you how fast the time goes. Today we're going to continue our thought about Christmas time uh, with a message I call Finding the Rhythm. Before we do that, uh, I have a special announcement to make that will mean a lot to maybe 50 or 100 of you that, that get excited about what God has called us to do in the nations as a church. One of the um, challenges that we have today is, you know, when we get, went, started going back to the nations as a, uh, taking teams a few years ago after the worst part of the recession was over, um, we, didn't, we didn't know where we were going to go. We didn't have any doors that were opening. We had one door open in Jamaica and then another door open, and then another, another. Now, we have probably five doors open for 2019, and we had to be very prayerful about which one. So we want to announce today that our mission to, for June of 2019 is Mission Bulgaria. It's going to be great. Now, <laughs> one person's excited. Anyway, uh, Mission Bulgaria is going to be a wonderful trip. We'd like to invite you, if you've been through Next Steps uh, and are part of the house, then we'd love for you to go uh, and be part of this trip. Uh, there's a couple of, there's, there's, there are two bonuses, um, and that is in, on the way into Europe and on the way out of Europe. Would you go ahead and put that up for us, please, on the screen? We're going to be stopping in London on the way in for, about, for an overnight and maybe a day, and on the way back, a brand new nation for us as a church Athens, Greece is going to be our fun day. Uh, it's right near Bulgaria, and so we're going to be, uh, I know what you're thinking, Greece is the word. But anyway, um, <laughs> 10 people got there. Anyway, so uh, it, it's exciting. It's going to be a privilege. Uh, you can put up the details if you want on that last slide. It's going to be like 2400 uh, which is cheaper than it was to go to the Philippines. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day, and we're very excited about it. And uh, if you are open to this, uh, we're going to need deposits or application fees starting next week. But you can talk to the branches. Jason, Dean, and Branch will be here, I think, after service or certainly for second service. And they're excited to talk to you about it. Uh, Plovdiv, Bulgaria, where we're going to be, where I was uh, last year, this past summer, uh, fantastic, wonderful place. Uh, the mission to the gypsies in Bulgaria is nothing short of phenomenal. It's going to be, it's, it's much needed what the church that we're going to be, that we support there, that we're going to be there with, what they do for the gypsy people, which is a big part of the population of Bulgaria. They need Jesus. They're entrenched in ancient poverty, not just recent poverty, but generations of poverty. And so we're going there to make a difference with them. Amen? Amen. All right. Today we're going to get in the message, finding the rhythm. I'm going to kind of uh, bring some things together from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Psalms. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 from the message, one of my favorite passages from the message, says this, are you tired? This is the words of Jesus. Are you tired, he says, worn out? Are you burned out on religion, just trying to do stuff in your own strength? Come to me, Jesus said. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Here it is. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. 
Keep company with me, Jesus reminds, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Did you know that grace has rhythm? Grace has a beat. Psalm 103, verse 20 says this, Bless the Lord, you as angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Angels do what they hear his word say. Daniel 10, finally, is a great passage about Daniel who's needing a breakthrough for his people that are being held captive in Persia. And he has found great favor. He's become a high government official, but he was still a man of the spirit. And the Bible says in verse two, Daniel chapter 10, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. He went into 21 days of prayer. He said, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. 21 days of focused prayer in a season of prayer. A few verses later, an angel comes and says to him, verse 10, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I've now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. Listen to this. For from the first day, everybody say first day. From the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, from the first day you started praying, from the first day you tried out for an answer, from the first day you went after God, the Bible says, and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have, I have come because of your words because of your words. Let's pray one more time. Holy Spirit, would you come and quicken us, give us hearts that perceive, minds that believe, and strengthen us in Jesus' name. This month we've been talking about times and seasons of God, that we are of the tribe of Issachar, the people of God that are given understanding of the times, and what it is we're supposed to do in response to those times. We, said, we always say this around here, life works best when God is first. And when we're open to God and sensitive to his heart, the Bible says we're able to apply our hearts unto wisdom. We're able to have discernment and kind of know what God is doing. Even if we don't know the details, we sense what God is, that he's doing something and he's leading us. Wisdom is knowing from God what to do and when to do it. And we all need wisdom, don't we? Don't you need wisdom today? The Bible says if you need wisdom, you gotta ask for it. You gotta believe for it, you gotta ask for it in faith, because if you don't ask for it, if you ask for it in doubt, you're not gonna get anything. In light of the things that um, we went through as a church this week, and for those of you that are, uh, haven't been here since last Sunday and don't see some of the social media, one of our precious stalwarts in this church, Mike Wilson, went to heaven very suddenly. Uh, he had, we thought he had defeated leukemia. Uh, he lived another two years and three months or so, and we thought he was in victory until a couple of weeks ago. He came and said he wasn't feeling well, and, and then he went to the hospital, and then it just went very quickly, and we had no idea this time last week what was going to happen, but I wanted to kind of, you know, sometimes when, when, I, when someone preaches a now word, when they preach prophetically, like we try to do on Sunday mornings especially, um, and speak into the moment, sometimes we don't realize what we're hitting or saying until after something happens and you look back. I want you to just to remind you, those of you that, that are going through this with the Wilson family, is the last few points of my message were this. Trust that God has you right now no matter what. Life doesn't always appear to be going your way, but it still is. Part of breakthrough is getting your heart and mind right, and I showed you the rope 
illustration from Francis Chan of, the, of eternity and the little piece that's our earthly existence, our lives right here. And I had no idea. That was kind of a last minute thing the Lord put in my heart to drop in there. And fi my final point was this. Even when you don't understand what's going on, <clears throat> pardon me, one day you say to yourself, one day God will make this look beautiful somehow. And I want to remind you of that because sometimes we get our eyes so much and our feelings so raw based on what's happening to us and around us that we actually stop, we start tuning out God instead of really leaning into him. And, and I want you to know that we sorrow not as, other, as others that have no hope. We are blessed. Now, as we move into the word today, anybody remember the old 80s song, We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's? We got the beat. It was, a, it was an old song. I remember it more than most because my son was just a little guy, maybe a year old, a year and a half old, and he was playing the drums already at that point. And, he, and his favorite song was, We Got the Beat. And, and, we, and it, we would go around, and he would hear it, you know, in the store or something, and he'd go, Beat! Beat! Of course, now, years later, he still plays the drums and runs a lot of our multimedia, our, our whole media team and, and the television and all the things that we're doing. But uh, it's, uh, it's amazing when you find the rhythm of God for your life. We've said this whole month that God has a perfect timing for every purpose. Not only that, but heaven is so precisely synchronized. I almost said circumcised. That's not right. <laughs> heaven is so precisely synchronized. Thank God he got that right. That heaven has a rhythm. Heaven has a rhythm of grace. There's a beat. There's a tempo. We know that God created music, and music requires a certain tempo. Therefore, heaven has a beat. I was thinking about music recently. You know, my, <clears throat> my father's a music professor, has a PhD in music, and has been a music professor for 50 years, basically, and just retired again for the fifth time. And um, I just remember, you know, they, my parents forced me to take piano lessons when I was a little boy. And I'm glad they did. I was probably about seven and played for four or five years, took lessons uh, until I could go to middle school and, and play in the band and learn the trombone. But I remember from the first piano lesson when she went to explain to me a time signature. That's where you see numbers like four, four, a four over a four, or a two over a four, a six over an eight. And I just remember what, you know, a time signature is something, you know, for those of you that aren't musical, it's just simply the top number is the beats per measure. So four, four time is four beats per measure, okay? And the bottom number is what kind of note gets one beat, and that's so Four, four time would mean four beats per measure and quarter notes get one beat. Um, and that tells us the cadence and tells us the pace that produce the tempo. And I want you to know, at certain seasons of your life, the time signature changes. And if you're not paying attention to it, you can miss it. And you can get out of rhythm, out of sync, with your life because God, once you submit your life to him, once you got saved, once you gave your life to Jesus, it's no longer yours. And you are now connected to heaven's timing and heaven's rhythm and heaven's beat. Life has a flow to it, like music. You know, it's interesting, what, I was thinking of these sayings, people that seem just a little off sometimes, if you were talking uh, to somebody else, said, well, you know, that person, they seem to be marching to the beat of a different drummer, right? Or you might even say they're a little 
offbeat. Isn't that interesting? Is somebody just a little offbeat? They're out of rhythm. They're out of sync with what's going on around them. And I'm going to say to you, we need to march to the rhythm of God's timing in every season because he's our drummer. He, is our, he gives us the cadence to our lives and lets us know when we need to slow down and when we need to speed up. And some of y'all that are going slow right now need to speed up. And some of y'all that are going too fast right now in life need to slow down. You need to get into heaven's rhythm. Now, in Scripture, when God wanted to move into a new season with strength, he would speak words to his people and tell them things like this. It's time to sing a new song. Remember if I got in trouble and, <clears throat> you know, as a, as, a, as a young person, especially as a teenager, if I got into trouble and kind of got pouty about stuff, my, my mother would say something like this, you better change your tune. <laughs> Have you ever heard that one? You better change your tune. Or you sound like a broken record. Right? Isn't it interesting all these little terminologies speak to us about the cadence and the rhythm of our lives. If you found somebody that was, that's positive, most of the time you would say they're upbeat. They're upbeat. Some people are offbeat. Some people are upbeat. But you've got to begin to find that rhythm and that place and break out of being a broken record. Isaiah 42 verse 10 God says to his own people, sing to the Lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth. In other words, it's time to change the tune. It's time to change the sound. It's time to change the rhythm and change the rhyme, change the beat. And three verses later, we see as the people begin to respond in singing a new song to God, we see another aspect of his life rise up when it says in Isaiah 42, verse 13, and the Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. God shouts. He shall prevail against his enemies. When you sing a new song, be ready for God to do a new thing. When you find God's rhythm in your life and proclaim the song of the Lord, it ignites something within the heart of God to arise and fight for you and prevail over his enemies. But if you keep singing the blues, you just keep getting more of what you already have. And there was a moment to sing the blues, but not forever. I was thinking about this, Siri. Now, last week I said some second service. I said, hey, Siri. And my iPad spoke to me. And I wasn't looking forward to speak to me. So I got to be real careful today. And if some of you are using Alexa, I better be careful because if you say Siri and Alexa too loud now, it wakes things up. And I was thinking about Siri, Alexa, Gabriel, and Michael. To our virtual assistants and to our angelic assistants, but all four are voice activated. All four of those names are voice activated. When I say, hey Siri, it didn't happen right now. I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't want it to. My assistant begins to listen and respond to the next few things that I speak. Some of you have Alexa, or there's other ones now, my goodness. There's all these different robotic responses and voices. But when you say something to those, they come awake. And they're listening to the next thing you say. I want you to know that your angelic assistance in the spiritual arena is listening to the next thing you say and waking up when you're speaking the word. Your words and lyrics activate the mighty angels of God. 
If and when you are agreeing with the word of God, they come awake. That's why in our text, Psalm 103, verse 20, once again, bless the Lord, you as angels, who excel in strength, who do what? Say it again, do what? They do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Let me ask you this, through Jesus Christ in the new covenant, where is the voice of his word? It's in you. In fact, the Bible says it's in your mouth like a two-edged sword. That you, the words you speak out of your mouth have the power of weaponry and begin to align with the purposes of God. That's why we say here, prophesy your promise. Thank God, Pastor Lindsay led us in that song earlier. I prophesy. I prophesy. What is prophecy? It's not somebody telling your future. Prophecy is saying what God is saying. It is speaking forth or proclaiming. As David sang the 23rd Psalm, he declared, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you're with me. Even though I'm going through a dark place or a dark season, I know you're with me because your word says you're with me. Not only in the Old Testament, Jesus said, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And he means it. Psalm 91, the psalmist writes, he shall give his angels charge over you. That doesn't mean they're the boss of you. But listen, it says, he shall give his angels charge over me and keep me from stumbling and falling. Angels respond to the spoken word of God. Hebrews 1 verse 14 from the New International Version says this. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Here's my point. We got a lot of fat angels. What I mean by that is they're underworked because they're waiting for you to recognize that you have authority over them and that they serve you. And sometimes the difference between receiving a harvest or a breakthrough or not is simply saying, God, I release the angels of God to go get my breakthrough. I used to think, you know, if you've been here any length of time, you know that I didn't know any spirit-filled Christians growing up except my aunt, my mother's sister, my, I called her Auntie Marilyn because she didn't want to be Aunt Marilyn. She was Auntie Marilyn. She spent a lot of time in Africa and all the aunts were aunties. So she came home when I was born from Africa and said, I want to be Auntie Marilyn. And she's very dramatic. And she was spirit-filled. And um, she would, we were pretty close. And from the time I was about 10 or 11, whenever I'd go to New Jersey or she would come here, she'd say, I want to drive you. Just come over for a ride with me. And she would drive me to a Christian bookstore, which was the last place I wanted to be at 11. And she would say, I'm going to take you to the Christian bookstore and I'm going to let you pick out anything you want joy. And that was back when they didn't really have any cool stuff. At the Christian. Today, Christian bookstore is a lot different. It's a lot better. Back in the day, that you know, I picked out stuff like uh, a little compass that looked like a tire and a compass on the inside, north, south, east, and west, and it said around it, Jesus saves. I never even knew what that meant for years. Years. But here's the funny thing about Auntie Marilyn is anywhere, anytime we were pulling into the mall or the place where the Christian bookstore was, she would say, now, Lord, I release the parking angels to get me a spot up front. And I would laugh. <laughs> That's so funny. And nine times out of 10, as she would pull in, somebody would be pulling out in the first spot or the second spot. I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. 
This is why we called her my crazy aunt from New Jersey. But she believed that you could now, not speak to angels, but just release them. When, when, when the angel comes to Daniel after he's been praying for 21 days, Daniel falls down his face. The guy says, no, stand up. I'm not, you don't worship me. I'm here to serve you. In the New Testament, it happened again. Angels showed up, and people started freaking out, bowing down. And, and they, no, 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 I'm... I'm just an angel. P Peter almost got worshipped as a human one time. And he said, no, no, stand up. I'm just a man. Why? Because all the glory is reserved only for God. People that, that get off on conversations with angels, now that's a different thing. That's not just offbeat. That's off the planet. People, that's how Mormonism was founded. Other, other, other additional things and side groups and things that got away from the word of God happened because an angel showed up and talked. That's why Paul said expressly in the book of Galatians, if though I or an angel from heaven show up and preach any other gospel but this gospel, let him be accursed. So you got to be careful when you talk about angels. Well, I don't talk about angels a lot. But the word of God says that you have authority to release them to do more than you're getting them to do. Is anybody, are you awake today? that they are voice activated and they respond to the voice of the word. And the word of the Lord is in your mouth to bring about the change. The word of the Lord is in your heart and in your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You've got to understand. Listen, and, the, and I want to say this too. Real angels are not little babies with diapers and wings with little bow and arrows, okay? My angels aren't, they don't look like Cupid. They look like eight foot tall warriors, okay? What you have to understand in your life is if you get a concept that, you know, some people think angels, they think, you know, it's the gaudy, all the gold lame and all these different fancy things from another time and, and they think angels are little babies with little bows and arrows. That's not what angels are, okay? Angels are a couple of different purposes. Gideon, excuse me, Gabriel, I get those G words mixed up. Gabriel and his whole tribe, his whole section of angels, they're messengers. They show up when God wants to say something or communicate something. And then Gabriel shows up to Daniel and says, hey, from the first moment of the first day you started to pray, I was on the way. I was sent. God said, get him his answer. But there's been a spiritual warfare. There's been a spiritual battle in the heavenlies. And this principality, this power over Persia, over this land, is trying to keep, keep us blocked off. And he said, and, and I've... Because of your words, I'm here. And because of your words, he had released Michael, the archangel. So those are the warring angels. The Bible says that Lucifer is a fallen angel. There are three archangels in heaven. This is Bible training, okay? Bible 101. Three archangels in heaven. Lucifer was of the music. But he had pride and fell from heaven and was sentenced to imprisonment on the earth to be tortured by God's people. The devil's not sent here to torture you. You were born to torture him. That's why we're on offense, not defense. Okay? Gabriel and Michael stayed true to God, and so the messenger angels and the warring angels, you know, when you say the Lord of hosts, you're talking about the Lord of the armies of heaven. That's Michael's section. Now the Bible says when Lucifer fell, he took a third of the angels with him. But that, that means how many angels are working for us? Two thirds. Three thirds minus one third. Is it? Anyway, so anyway, just trying to make you know, see the enemy will tell you that we don't, that, that, that we don't, we have, we're small, we're insignificant, we got little power, little authority, and that the devil is all powerful because he thinks he's the God of this world, little g, he thinks he is because he took the keys from Adam. But the Bible says Jesus restored 
our authority at the cross descended to the hill. The Bible says, Revelation 1, took back the keys of death. He took them back and he had prophesied in Matthew 16, on this rock I'll build my church, my gathering of called out ones to action. I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it and I will give you the keys, right? So the keys are no longer in the devil's hands. We still live in a fallen planet, but we got two-thirds of the angels on our side. And almighty God and the devil's a liar. Fear is a liar. You ever heard that song? Powerful song. And so angels are standing around in your life waiting for instruction, waiting to be released by the word of God, the voice of his word. Now, in order to speak the word, you gotta know the word. So you gotta get into it for yourself, not just on Sundays when you come here. Faith, we learned from Charles Neiman years ago, is believing and speaking. Believing and speaking, believing and speaking. There's a sword in your mouth. In Daniel 10, when the angel shows up, he says, look, I've come because of your words. Let me ask you this. What are your words releasing your angels to do? Are your words releasing your angels to break down or break through? Because when you get into the rhythm of heaven and you sing a new song unto the Lord, you're releasing power. You're releasing spiritual strength to keep moving forward. Let me ask you, what are you believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth? I'm not trying to just change your words today. I grew up in the, in the Word of Faith camp in, in many ways back in the 80s, and so we were taught to speak the Word, and speak the Word is important. But let me tell you something. The Bible says it's what you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that will determine your deliverance, your salvation. Not just what you believe and hold, <clears throat> and not just what you speak. A parrot can say scriptures because he can hear you say them and he can memorize them and he can say them. That doesn't mean he's saved and it doesn't mean he has faith because he doesn't believe it in his heart. It's what you believe in the core of your being. Not what you tell everybody you believe. What you believe when you're by yourself. What you believe when there's nothing else happening. What you believe when the power goes out and the TV's off. What you believe when nothing else is going on around you, when you're being still and you're quiet and you're with your own thoughts. What do you believe then? Because what you believe then and what you begin to give voice to is what you, that's what you really believe. And that's what happens when you begin to bring this, bring this word forth out of your heart. Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is gonna speak it. At some point, your mouth is gonna give away what's really going on inside you. That's why you gotta fill up. I'm not asking you to change your words today alone. I know there's probably no negative Nellies in this church, but there used to be a long time ago. Some people, all you have to say is, how are you? And immediately, they'll verbally spew. And then they wonder why they're struggling. I want to say this to you. It's time to play a new tune and time to sing a new song. Jesus said this, where two shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be done by my Father which is in heaven. And the word there is symphoneo, symphony. Concerts of prayer and praise, symphonies for God. Can I tell you, in this place, in this church, everyone has a sound. Every one of us has a talent, an instrument to play. 
Some are like the woodwinds, the strings, the brass, or the drums, but they all have to play from the sh same sheet of music and keep the same beat. And when all of us begin to find our place, so I'm so thrilled, as Pastor Tristan was talking about next steps. This year, we've gone from about 160 people involved in serving in the church to probably close to 240 in one calendar year. And we didn't even do, have the whole calendar year. Wow. But there's a lot more people that want to come and just sit and soak and watch. But our faith is not a spectator sport. Our faith is a participation sport. It's not about being on the sideline. It's being about being in the game. And though we all have unique gifts, talents, and abilities, when, it, so, so my father, uh, right before his 80th birthday a few weeks ago, we went and surprised him because he does, the, the final thing he's still doing at the college that we can't get him to retire from yet is he conducts this Hallelujah Chorus uh, Messiah sing-along every year for the Christmas season right before Thanksgiving. So this year we took uh, our grandsons, went with us and got to see their great-grandfather conducting at almost 80 years of age. I mean, it's two days from 80 at that point. And so my father, as I've grown up, my, some of my earliest memories of my father are him taking choirs or symphonies and conducting. And I remember as a little boy, I'd get up on a stool and pretend I was my dad and I would, and I would go like this and like this and ha ah, and, ah, and And my father contorts his face and, and, you know, and he just, he's a conductor. That's what he does. And, and I was thinking about how God wants to move in his church in that way and, and just say, okay, now you, okay, all right, yeah, and, and you over here and up and uh, and there's a place where we've got to be the symphony of God, where two shall concert, where two shall sing a new song and declare a new word on earth. God will do it from heaven. Where two shall symphony. Doesn't mean you say this, that you play the same exact note, but they go together, they harmonize. I mean, you have to be the same. It means you have to do work from the same sheet of music. That's all it is. There's still moments where somebody's resting and somebody else is playing. There's still moments in, at different times. When you find God's rhythm for your now season of life and you set yourself in agreement with his word, By speaking it, confessing it, declaring it, your old cycles will begin to dwindle and new patterns will emerge. But it begins with you, begins with your heart, and then it comes out of your mouth. Change takes time. Give yourself grace, but grace has a rhythm. And as I said earlier, while we consider some folks offbeat, we consider most happy folks upbeat, and we have to keep celebrating those things. We sang a song earlier in the special, and it was great to see everybody trying to clap. And by that I mean trying to clap. I guess it's because my dad's a conductor and, and I was musical growing up that I just, I'm not a good dancer, but I've got rhythm. I've got, I've got a beat inside of me all the time. Whatever you did earlier, Pastor Lindsay, there was, we were more clapping on one and three than usual. And then all of a sudden it switched in the chorus and, and the bridge, and we were clapping on two and four. And I could see all the white people struggling. I'm saying, I mean, different people struggling. <laughs> I can see different people struggling. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Sorry, P PL can't say that in this climate. I can speak to my people. So just put your hands together with me right now.
Now talk to somebody. Now you can't, you can't do it. See, the moment I said it's like patting yourself and doing that, okay? You can't do it. You can't do it. You know you can't do it. <laughs> Here's the deal. As you get closer to God, as you, as you, as you hear his heartbeat for lost people, for hurting people, for what's going on around you, when you lean into the Father and you hear that heartbeat, you can begin to sense the rhythm of heaven the unforced rhythms of grace. And your life will begin to take on that new season, that new cycle. When you recognize that you're not supposed to march to the beat of a different drummer or your own drum, you're supposed to hear the rhythm of heaven and work it into your life. What's our takeaway? What's our, how do we apply this word? First of all, this week, you have homework. Because this week is our, oh, see, somebody's upset. Somebody doesn't like homework, my friend back there. Here's your homework. Be here for Wednesday night for a holiday night of worship. By the way, when it comes to paying attention, can I just give you a little bit of a clue? Um, we run our announcements. We, don't have, we, don't have, we haven't been running commercials very much the last year. It was taking too many man hours to do. So we try to do our announcements on slides before and after the service. And then there's a calendar down the hall that you can look at any time of the whole month that people go to great lengths to put up there so you can be in the rhythm of this house. But very few people pay attention. Um, do, you, do you guys have the ability to put up that slide uh, that we had up earlier today? No, we didn't plan on this. I just see if we can improvise a little bit. I don't know if we can. Is that okay? They say it's gonna come up anyway. The, the slide of the, we don't know if anybody's paying attention slide. See, they didn't even pay attention. There it is. Nope. Nope. That's holiday schedule. There's another one. They'll keep going to the next one. Here we go. This was up earlier today. We wonder if people are paying attention to the announcements. So here's a test. The first five people to read this and find Pastor Tristan and say... We lost it. Wow. See, that was a joke. No. The first five people that read this and find Pastor Tristan and say the key phrase, those who listen to instruction will prosper, from Proverbs 16, 20, will receive a prize. Blessed are those who pay attention. That's been running all morning when you got here. Every few seconds. Now, the prizes have all been given away because five young people paid attention and they might have told each other, I'm not sure. <laughs> but five young people paid attention, and I almost could have predicted two of them. I almost could have predicted it. We do these things so we don't have to take up more service time to make announcements and tell you, because you don't listen then either. <laughs> and some people, when we do the funny commercials, you love the commercial, you have no clue what it was about. And that was hilarious. Yeah, what, when is the event? Oh, what, what event? <laughs> See, the whole thing is about paying attention to stuff going on around you. And pay attention most of all to keeping time with the God who loves you more than you love yourself. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Lord, we celebrate your goodness and your grace. And I ask you, Father, to reveal Jesus in a greater measure in this place and to everybody connecting with us on our online campus. Lord, let this be a day where 
something of the message of your timing gets from our heads into our hearts. Lord, your word says that we rejoice in you with songs of deliverance, songs of freedom. Lord, would you let those songs of freedom be in this house? And when we come together on Wednesday night for a holiday night of worship, would you draw people back? Would you draw people to bring others that will find their connection with you this week? Lord, we want to share our greatest gifts. And we give you the honor and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Just keep your head bowed for another moment. Maybe you're here today and you just say your life has been out of order. Something has been out of order. Something has been out of sync. You haven't been yourself. You haven't felt like yourself. Maybe physically, maybe emotionally, maybe mentally, maybe just, maybe on your job. Maybe everything was going great and all of a sudden things just, you hit a wall in some facet of your life. Maybe relationships. Whatever it is. The answer is Jesus. The answer is to get back on heaven's time by opening your heart and by inviting Jesus in. He's not a religious God. He's a God who loves you. And went through hell to redeem you. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, you know, I feel like maybe you, you, maybe there's people here, you already have a relationship with God in some way. You, you're saved. You, you prayed a prayer at some point. That's awesome. But you can still get out of sync. You can still get off kilter. You can still get out of it somewhere. That's why church is important. But if you're here, you say, Pastor, would you pray for me that, that my life would get back in order that I would hear the rhythm of heaven for my life and begin to move with that. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up right where you are? Just put it up, keep it up. We're not going to have you stand up or anything. So I want to pray for you. Father, for those whose lives are moving topsy-turvy, helter-skelter in ways where they're just out of sync, out of alignment, Lord, would you just minister your life right now to everybody whose hand is raised, everybody in the room and everybody connecting with us on our online campus, would you just minister, Father, to everyone whose hand is raised, whose heart is open, who is receptive to have a reset. Lord, would you put inside of all of them and all of us, would you give us a new song? Would you change our tune? Would you help us to live according to your purpose? promise and your timing for we give you the praise the honor and the glory in Jesus name amen if you need prayer I'm gonna I'll be right down here after church for just two three minutes if you want to pray if you raise your hand right then we'll do that ushers would you stand up take your positions we're gonna receive our tithes and offerings today listen wise men when Jesus was born for Christmas Day, the Bible says the wise men came and brought gifts. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Today we bring of our treasures. We didn't ask you to bring any sheep to sacrifice today or cows, thank God. But what we do have is our ability to sow seed through our own way of giving. We try to make giving real easy around here. We have a bunch of different ways to give online or through Text to give is what many, many people are doing now. Uh, I, would, I, I would say most, but I'm not sure it's most yet, but a big percentage of people have been giving on text to give. That's a great way to do it. Some people are doing the uh, automatic clearinghouse where their tithes and offerings automatically come out of their uh, checking account every week as soon as they get paid. That's a way to do things. However you want to do it, we just like to keep it real easy because this is a part of aligning our lives with the purpose of God. There are some people that line up everything with God except their finances. 
But God cares about you. If it worries you, it worries him. If it, I mean, I don't mean worry, but I mean, if you care about it, he cares about it. And a lot of people, their biggest they struggle is financial. That doesn't change overnight, but I will promise you this. If you get into the rhythm of God in your tithes and offerings, there will be a time you're going to break out of that old cycle of lack and emergency and pressure and begin to see God begin to turn that thing around and give you a budget where you can tell money where to go instead of ask it where it's been, right? Let's believe God as we sow today for divine order in all of our lives, financially, spiritually, emotionally, relationally. I'm gonna pray for you one more time. Father, I just thank you. Lord, as we sow this seed, we're believing for divine alignment that you would bring everything into your perfect timing. And Lord, we release the angels of God today to go bring in financial abundance, financial harvest, anything that's been delayed, anything that's been held up, anything that there's been resistance. We speak your word, Father. Man, I feel God on me right now. Father, every delay, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. Every wall that's been built, we kick it down in the name of Jesus. Father, open heaven's windows and pour out such blessing and favor that your people would never lack, that your people would never be laid on a bill, that your people would never be ashamed. You're our provider, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides here. And we see it and we claim it and we release the angels of God to go bring it in, in abundance, right away. And we promise you, Father, as we see them do these supernatural things, according to your word, we will give you the glory, not them. We'll give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And if you believe it, say, Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give right now. church awesome how many of you guys enjoy this amazing worship band right here pastor Lindsay and the team listen this Wednesday night you do not want to miss it because we have this team going to be doing an entire evening of holiday night of worship so make sure you get here early because it's going to be packed this Wednesday and afterwards we have an after party for all of us but for those of you who love to bake and maybe if you like to fake to bake that means you go to Publix and you bring it in on your own platter we want to encourage you to please bring in some cookies some baked goods for us to enjoy after at our after party so that's happening this Wednesday and for those of you who came in for the first time and you have that welcome card please fill it out and see our information center uh, and Pastor Richard is going to pray with those of you that responded. So if you're in here and you're saying, Pastor, pray for me, come right up here and see our amazing pastor in that awesome gold speckled shirt right up here. Come on. Pastor, look at fresh. All right, guys, God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Come get prayer.
joining us at Now Church. For the latest updates, visit us at nowchurch.com, including live or on-demand video, event registration, online giving, and much more. And don't forget to follow Now Church on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you 